least I can do one shot. So this is my form of AAA. Um, uh, and this is me, so uh, Phil Milton, technical lead at Access. Um, help from the uh, North West Drupal user group so if you're in, in Manchester on the second Tuesday of the month, then come along. Uh, yeah, I ran a, ran a blog on code and uh, created this thing called Flash. You may have heard of it. Am I, am I not loud enough? No? Okay. There is a, there is a microphone here. I think I'll have to just, I'll, I'll just raise my voice. There we are. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we're going to go through web form, obviously. Um, lovely that that's almost cut off on the side there. Never mind. Uh, it's not cut off on my screen. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll go through some history because lots of people have been saying, oh, what's this web form? So, uh, uh, so we'll be going to yeah, creating web forms and more step forms. Some settings, submissions, um, and then some advanced and custom components later on. So, if you're still awake by the end, there'll be some code advancements. Um, so, Webform, if you've heard of it, and who's used Webform on Drupal 7? Like, probably most of the room. Um, so, half a million installs, which isn't too bad for a module, really. Uh, <coughs> so, Drupal 8 obviously released November 2015. Uh, but it doesn't, didn't look like there was any Drupal 8, Drupal 8 version of Word, uh, Word form um, for quite some time. And then this project called YAML form came along, um, and that seemed to sort of fit the bill as a, as a web form solution. Um, and I only heard about it in sort of uh, November last year, it's um, October, I suppose, at DrupalCon Dublin. Um, but it so just so happened that um, they were already in talks then to, to, to port that uh, that module into Webform. So the YAML form project became Webform uh, at the end of last year. So if you've been using, if you've used or have been using YAML form, it's exactly the same. They've just changed the name thing. Um, but uh, it's a completely different, like basically rewrite of the entire module. Um, now spending about six thousand installs, which um, for a beta module two months old is, is pretty good. Um, so it comes with a couple of core modules. Um, Webform obviously does all the internal components. Um, there's Webform node which means you can embed Webforms into nodes. Uh, and the web, Webform UI acts like um, the views UI or the field UI. It gives you sort of um, access to, to all the settings and things behind the scenes. It's pretty neat that you can turn that off now. Um, some other modules in there, so Webform Devel, if you're developing, that, that ties in nicely with the Devel module. It means you can um, generate submissions and things, it's quite handy. Webform Examples, uh, it installs a bunch of like preset examples so you can see what's going on inside, web, uh, inside Webform. Um, I'll, I'll be coming onto one of those later because it's quite, quite handy to show all the different kinds of elements there are. Uh, Webform Templates allows you to create a Webform based on a template so you can Say I want a contact form that looks like this, and you can generate another one. Um, it's basically like a, a node clone of a web form. So when you've got web form installed, it looks kind of like this. Um, pretty familiar territory, really. You've got the sort of Drupal admin area and a sort of views base um, admin screen at the bottom. Uh, so to create a web form, you just click on this. Add web form button. Can you see that? That's pretty low resolution there. <coughs> um, and you get this little pop-up box. So you're self-explanatory. Uh, I'm going to create an inquiry form here. And then that's it. So this is a blank web form with no um, elements in it. Uh, so let's make some elements. <laughs> so to add an element, obviously, click on the add element button. It's handily labeled. Uh, and you get this little modal box with hundreds, you look at this scroll bar here, and there's um, hundreds of different element types to choose from. Um, but then I'm going to select a basic text area, so this is um, the text field box, and I get the standard sort of title and description and things. Um, there's the there are 60 different elements though. 
uh, it exists in a number of categories. So text area is like the basic elements. So you've got text and you've got email address, like basic sort of elements like that. Um, <coughs> I won't go through all these, but you've got advanced and composite. Uh, composite are more than one other basic fields. So you've got, so let's say you've got like addresses. You've obviously got postcode and you know, the address fields. Um, they will form a composite element, so it'll be a, a multitude of, of different elements. Um, I don't think there's, there's too much to go on here, but um, containers basically contain other elements. So they're like field sets, basically, um, where you can sort of <coughs> hide and show them. Uh, yeah. So some basic examples here. So you've got the text field or text area and uh, email, for example. They are basic elements. Uh, this one at the bottom here is a composite element. So it's it's a, an email and an email confirm field, uh, which basically validates that the, the two are the same. So um, you can even go crazy. So there's there's a select box. There's a rating um, element there. Uh, you can have a range. You can you can this this looks kind of unusual for me, but <laughs> uh, you can allow people to add in multiple items of, of text, uh, or even get them to select a, a color, um, for example. So what I've done is installed uh, Webform, and I have the, this is the example elements template. So um, this is one of the uh, uh, web forms, you, you, one of the web forms you get when you install the uh, example web forms module. Um, and it shows you all the different kinds of different elements. And, and uh, they can be um, set up in a couple of different ways. So it's sort of a kind of good test bed for what's going on. Uh, you can see there's tons of stuff in here. Um, I mean, I'm not exactly sure when I'd be able to use uh, credit cards on a on a web form. <laughs> it's there. Um, password confirm and things. Uh, this this is kind of interesting. So you've got a, a text box that you can a, a picture element you can sort of draw in, and it gets saved as a, a submission. Um, it's quite good as well that they put in these uh, issues. So if there are any any fields that have bugs next to them, um, you can just check this out for reference about about what bugs exist if there are any. Um, you see, I've only got halfway through this form. I mean, there's tons of stuff. Uh, so it's definitely a, a good way of a reference guide, basically, <coughs> to try and figure out how to build your uh, your web forms. Uh, validation, so each of the fields, uh, elements, has its own validation. Um, so you can say that it's, it's required um, and what error messages display when you uh, when you hit that validation. You can even limit them to a number of characters, so this is uh, 50 characters mi uh, maximum. And I can, uh, so this is what it looks like. So if I, um, if I try to submit that, it'll tell me I forgot to fill it in. And this this will uh, this little JavaScript component it will decrement as I type in, so it's quite it's quite cool. Uh, each field has conditional logic built in, um, so you can <coughs> reference for different fields within the, in the thing. So um, what I'm doing here is saying that if uh, if the name uh, name element is filled in, then make this element which is in this field um, visible. So what it's doing here is basically as I enter the text into that box, it pops the email address in. Um, so you can see you can sort of build some quite nice logic there. Uh, they also have input masks as well. So that a text element uh, you can set to be an input mask. So this is an example of them here. Um, or you can make your own. So you can see the custom at the bottom. And you get your own um, uh, input mask to put in. So this is a validation on a national insurance number, which is a UK thing, um, but basically I'm saying it needs to be a letter, a letter, um, six numbers and a letter. So um, you can see you can build up quite complicated um, validation just from the, the web form interface. Uh, worth talking about multi-step forms. So on the um, administration page, you get this add, add a page button. So that gives you the option to add a page. Funny enough. Um, and you can give it a title. Um, but what that does is it looks kind of like this. This is a two-page form with 
which is cut off from the end, that's great. <laughs> but I've got, I've got page one with a name field in it, and page two with an email field in it. And that's, that kind of looks like this. So this top screen is, is page one, and as I progress through the form, the, the, the progress bar fills in, and, um, and this is all baked in. Um, so I, I haven't had to do much, uh, any coding at all to get this working. Uh, and, and these, this wizard at the top is actually quite configurable, so there's loads of different sets of settings inside the inside web form to sort of say what this looks like as well. So um, you can do a percentage um, complete or something. And it's not just um, as the steps there. Uh, talking of web form settings, so if you're familiar with web form in Drupal 7, there was a bunch of different things you could do. Um, so I thought I'd list some of the things that are sort of new or improved to Drupal 8. <coughs> um, so you, you could close down. Uh, you could close down a web form before in Drupal Seven. You can still do that in Drupal Eight, but you can give people access to their own submissions here um, based on access permissions. Um, you can disable like uh, some of the client side stuff. So if you want to test your server side validation or turn it off completely. Um, you can, you can uh, set that in settings. You can allow your user to save drafts. So instead of the um, submit button at the bottom, it would be a draft, save draft button. Uh, and you can allow users to come back to your platform at a later date. Uh, you can restrict the, uh, the actual global number of submissions to web form as well. So if you want to have only 50 submissions, for example, then you can set that up. Um, <coughs> Uh, control action on the form event is interesting. So you can say, instead of submitting and saving this as a, as I normally would, um, just change the action on the form and post it to somewhere else. Um, so you can you, know, you can set up search boxes that, that interact with different sites and things. Uh, you can also add and uh, basically customize completely the JavaScript and and style sheets that are printed up on the page, which means you don't have to. You know, put files on the site. You can you can put the code straight into the, the form. Um, there are a few settings. I mean, each of these um, field sets like opens up into multiple options. So, um, well, well worth having a look through. Um, and this is the kind of access panel. So you can see you can you can give access to different roles based on on what you want them to do on the submission handler. Uh, <coughs> okay, handlers. So, in web form in Drupal 7, you had this um, uh, settings where you could say, you know, once I commit, uh, complete this form, the email goes to this place. That's been replaced by this uh, handler section, which is probably the most interesting part of, of the new web form section. Um, so what I've done here is, uh, uh, is set up two handlers that send emails to different people based on the, on the submissions there. Um, but there are some, you can set the custom handlers. So there's, a, there's one baked in where you can uh, get the web form to submit to a, a JSON, um, an API endpoint. So it'll just send the request uh, across the internet to a different service. Um, but you can build your own, and I'll be, if I've got enough time at the end, I'll, um, I'll go through building your own. But this is, this is interesting, because um, it basically means you can tie into everything that, that web form's doing. Submissions. So submissions are uh, entity-based. So, so what um, Webform does is it generates a, a submission entity and saves that in your database, and you get this sort of uh, admin screen. Um, and, that, and they basically, you can look inspect the the, the um, what's that thing? you can inspect the submissions as you would uh, normally in in Drupal Seven, along with all this metadata at the top, uh, and you can. Download them as you as you normally would, um, and there's there's a tons of you know settings and features to do uh, web form uh, uh, submission exports. So uh, some advanced stuff um, because uh, the elements in the web form are built on the form API, you can use for hook form alter to alter those elements. If you're familiar with Drupal 7's version of web form, they built this proprietary form API inside web form. 
Um, so what they've done is, is basically start to begin with, with the Drupal uh, tools and, and, uh, and form handlers. So this is me just changing the name of, um, of, of the form element, but you, know, you can see that you can tie into the, the, the normal way of, uh, Drupal way of doing things. Um, if you're feeling brave, there is this uh, uh, YAML source handler thing. Um, so you can edit the form in YAML, which is mad, but <laughs> uh, if you don't want to click around the site and you know, configure things and you, you're familiar with the syntax, you can edit it. Um, but this means it's also uh, CMI exportable. So all the web forms you have on your site are exportable by CMI. And uh, this section here is actually just a, this little section down the bottom. Um, and because uh, web forms are now CMI exportable, you can deploy them as parts of your configuration. Um, and I have I've done this with great success, actually. We built a fairly complicated and multi-step multi form, um, submitted it into the configuration, put it on the production site, imported the config, and there it was. And we didn't have to do anything. It just, it just kind of worked quite nicely. Um, great little feature this, because I know the pain of porting web forms between platforms in Drupal 7, so this is, this is really handy. Um, so a little bit on custom components. So you can build custom uh, elements. So as I said, Drupal that web form builds on the form API. Um, it does need a little bit of uh, boilerplate code to sort of handle things like uh, the validation handlers um, and the submission handlers that web form likes. But basically, you're, you're going to look at two different types of forms. So you've got that field. So you've got your basic, which is like your text fields and your, your select lists. And then your composite, which is sort of more um, advanced stuff. Uh, basically, anything with, with multiple items in it. Um, so to create a, uh, this is creating an element in Drupal 8. So uh, basically, this doesn't do much, but it, you can't see the um, but this extends the text field class and basically gives you a text field. Um, so what you do then is you go into uh, your module and you make a plugin at, at web form element. Uh, and there's a lot on the screen here, but basically this um, annotation is what helps web form understand what's going on. And what I've done is extended here the text field, which is part of the, um, the web form module. So the web form has its own, uh, it sort of dumps a bunch of stuff on top of the text field, and you extend on that. So these two sort of uh, elements work together to produce your, your um, custom element. Um, custom handlers, um, which is probably where you're going to spend most of your time um, if, you do, if you're doing custom stuff. So there are f four handlers inside Drupal 8 web form libraries. Um, Broken web form handler is just a, a catch class that if you if you break one of your handlers, it will fall back onto that so it doesn't it doesn't crash the site. Um, debug form handler just prints a message off when the form submitted. It's not particularly uh, interesting. Web form handler is um, uh, sorry email web form handler um, does what it says. It sends an email when you send when you submit a request. And there's remote post which I mentioned before, but that. Um, will submit your submission to a different uh, endpoint. And you can set up what endpoint you want these things to go to. So to make your own web form handler, it's actually surprisingly easy. Um, you just need to make this uh, uh, plugin under plugin web form handler inside your module, um, extending the, the web form handler base. And uh, the annotation basically tells web form what that should be doing. Uh, sorry, what to call it. Um, there's things like cardinality, so you can say um, this is cardinality unlimited, which means I could add multiple instances of this handler to the same web form. Um, so cardinality single would be, you know, I could only add one thing to that web form at a time. Um, and then there's, there's a few different ways of, of getting the results out. But, but basically what you want to do is add in some handlers inside that, so these form functions. So the, the post save handler is called after the submission is saved. 
Um, and all I'm doing here is printing out a message that says, you know, I've, I've been called in this class at this, at this function. So there's a number of different um, events you can sort of react to. Uh, you're probably using post save much at most because that, that makes sense. You know, there's the thing saved into the database. Um, you then do things with the submission. But it might be anything from, you know, um, uh, you can create entities, so um, like custom entities, uh, based on, on the uh, user's um, submissions, or you, know, you can replace your uh, registration functions and produce a, a user entity uh, out of that handler. So there's some real power, power coming into this, this module, definitely. Um, so just one or two conclusions then. So uh, Webform obviously compatible with the Form API, which gives you all that you know, base level functionality going on. Um, nicely extensible. I haven't had to write a lot of code to get custom elements and handlers in there. Um, it's somewhat unit tested. It's not quite complete yet, so, um, but it's, at least it's tested in some respect. Um, We've been using it for a couple of months at Access, and we haven't seen that many problems. There's been some minor edge cases here and there, but it's been really useful. Uh, and yeah, powerful. It's, um, it's definitely up there and one of the, the best Webform things that I've used. Um, so Webform's currently at, at beta 7 release. <coughs> there are some bugs left, but um, plenty to help out with. Uh, so if you want to go along and help, um, there's this roadmap that shows you what sort of uh, features are incoming in the future. Um, and yeah, uh, have a look at the, the web form page and um, at the, the issue list, see where you can help out. Um, there are a couple of alternatives, uh, and it'd be remiss of me not to mention them. So uh, in Drupal 8 Core, you have this contact module, which basically gives you a contact form, which sends an email. So there's a contact storage module which will save that, uh, the submissions on the, on the contact form into the database. Um, we've had some problems with this at Access. Um, what, what tends to happen is the core module will get some feature that the contact storage is already doing and they're kind of, they're kind of fighting against each other quite a lot. So um, not, not compre completely robust at the moment, but um, still a good solution. Uh, eForm is a uh, is basically the entity form, so it generates entities, but it does it in a in a different, a different way, basically. So um, you need to sort of uh, understand where your entity is going to and what they're doing and things. Um, but it still uses Drupal eight concepts, so it's an interesting alternative. But it has nowhere near as as much sort of feature sets as the the Webform module, in, in my opinion. Um, so thanks. Any, any questions on? Yeah, I mean, you'll have to build your own handlers and, and code, you know, code the handlers in at the moment. Um, but, you know, there's, there's the sort of, I guess there's a, a feature set there for a new module that will generate entities based on a, a matrix. So you sort of feed in the submission and, and feed in the form, uh, the entity fields on the other side and generate your entities. Um, and that shouldn't be too difficult using the Drupal tool set you've already got. Um, we've been doing it for, um, so we had uh, a system where you, you generated quotes, which sort of falls from the third party API, but basically we were saving that quote as an entity and giving the user a user account as well, so we could create a couple of entities off the back of it, uh, and that wasn't an awful lot of code really, uh, so it was, <laughs> it was pretty easy to do, um, and certainly more understandable than what rules tends to do, because I, I had trouble with rules. Uh, I think
think the guy at the back of us spoke to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, because it's all, they're all for use at the moment, um, you can tweak things. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there's, <coughs> there's the back end, but obviously if you, if you give, you, uh, you can give the users a token where they can look at their own submission based on, and it sort of sits in the form that they submitted it. So that's kind of nicer. Um, but yeah, you're still, you're still looking at this admin panel, I guess. Yeah. What are you, what are you looking for? Basically, for a workflow where you can get certain submits for your own I know of, um, but because uh, I guess because they're entities, you can create your own view and, and put that wherever you like and give it its own its own spin on things. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I've got a similar thing to you know the citation thing we did in the system. I'll accept citation. Hmm. We use that. Um, use that component for each step. Yeah, I mean, you probably get 90% of the way with what's built in with, with, right. with, with Form anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I had to, uh, built a custom element to do um, PCA predict, which is the, um, the new post within it, I think, um, right. for address validation, basically. Mm. Um, and most of my time was spent building it in, in, the, in the actual element itself. Yeah. The actual web form thing was like, like 10 lines of code done. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What about Feeney? Have you done much Feeney? We have. Uh, my, our front end, so our UX lead says it's terrible, but um, oh. <laughs> he's quite opinionated. Uh, but you can you can get, get it sort of uh, to theme different, like for a multi-step form, you can theme different pages in different ways okay. and give it different yeah, templates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, um, if I edit this, uh, So not only have you got, um, you can inject <coughs> custom CSS and JavaScript into the page right. uh, itself. Um, you can also, in here, somewhere. Where's it gone? <laughs> form attributes, yeah, you can put a web form, you can put CSS classes and stuff right. yeah. directly into the page. So you can sort yeah. of, yeah, yeah put your, make your CSS to adapt to your, your page content. Yeah, I'm more thinking of that kind of thing. Probably do that with um, yeah, with some of the container classes. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably do it. I think it, it's built into the state API, but yeah, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I'd have to play with, uh, with what you need <laughs> to get it working, but yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, that, that's me. Um, we are hiring at the moment, so if you fancy coming and working on the web form for a bit, um, by all means get in touch. Um, but that's it. <laughs>